Today's scripture reading is from Isaiah 11, 1 to 10. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, a branch, and a branch shall grow out his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. How delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equality for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with a rod of his, of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion, and the faltering together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ASAP, and the when children shall put its hand on the otter's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the Lord will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On one day, on the de- that day, the, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of God. Yes, thank you so much, Sequoia. Let us pray together. And as we do, I invite us to breathe in deeply and breathe out fully, breathing in the breath of life rooting ourselves more deeply in God's presence. God, who is with us, anchor us in hope. God, who is with us, anchor us in hope. God, who is with us, anchor us in hope. Amen. What anchors your hope these days? What is your hope anchor? Hope is, is one of those strange things. It's a funny thing, isn't it? It's, it's so elusive. It's so hard to hold hope in our hands. It, is, it slips away sometimes, just as soon as we need it. There's not a formula to create it for us. It's, it's something that gets so confused with optimism and positivity, yet roots us more deeply into something beyond those things, doesn't it? Hope is forged in darkness, in the very same place where despair is from and fosters, in those places where we are sad and lonely, in the places where we are lost and alone, in those places where we don't know what to do next, in that darkness is where hope is born. We don't need hope if it weren't for the troubles in life, right? Hope is there, is needed because of crisis, because of disaster, because of those things that are broken in our life, 
in our lives, in our world. Hope is challenging to find sometimes, isn't it? What is your hope anchor these days? From where does your hope come? On this second Sunday of Advent, we are, are trying to gather up faster together, dwell in God's hopeful abundance. Abundance not in wish fulfillment, but in this, this sense, this belief, this trust that God is enough. That in God's enoughness, there is even enough hope for us as we face a world that is indeed full of such trouble and darkness. We hold in this time of waiting and of attention and of, of preparing we hold in one hand our deep longing and need for God, for hope, for Jesus. And we hold on the other hand the, that which already is, the already abundance that God has already poured forth into this world in the person of Jesus and in the body of Christ of which we are a part in this time of Advent, we hold together our longing and our need and our looking ahead to the coming of Christ and the kingdom in its fullness, and we remember what God has already done, remembering with, with joy and hope and eagerness the, the birth of Jesus, the entering into this world of God's kingdom, the incarnation, that, that most evident embodiment of God's abundance. Love coming to dwell right here with us. Where do we find our hope these days? Where do we find our anchoring of hope? In what do you place your hope today? What shape does it take? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Where does it come from? When I think about this question for myself, what is my hope anchor? It comes down to this, this, this vision of the kingdom of God. Now, this is something that we talk about all the time, all the time. Now, whether you hear those words or you hear me say those words or we claim those words for it, we talk about it all the time. This is the foundation of what it is that brings us together. It is the thing that we hope for. And as I was trying to think about how this became my hope anchor or how it came, I came to understand what I do understand, where, how I came to envision what I envision about God's kingdom, I don't know. But I do know that it, it comes from a lot of other people helping me see it helping me see the big picture that we find in Scripture, but also helping me find these little glimpses of it day after day after day. This kingdom of God that we talk about, that we proclaim, is all the way through Scripture. And it's easy to kind of glance over it and to, to talk about it, but not really talk about it. It's easy to proclaim that we celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ without remembering that Jesus talked about the good news of the kingdom of God. That is that good news. And Jesus wasn't the first one to talk about it or proclaim it or help to bring it into this world. This image, this idea, this promise of God's kingdom is there from the very beginning, and it is a tapestry woven throughout Scripture. And when I think about, again, how did I come to find this as my hope anchor, this kingdom of God, I think about all the times, especially at Advent, where I heard this passage read and others like it from Isaiah, like the one we heard last week and the ones that we'll hear over the next couple of weeks. I remember some faces of people who proclaimed it to me, who helped me learn about it in Sunday school, who helped me to remember it in these little ways over and over again. Do you hear what some of the images are in today's scripture? You can probably picture art of this, of this very passage, right, with the lion and the lamb laying down together, these beautiful images of a transformed world 
We hear echoes of it in Handel's Messiah. We hear all these ways that these images have come down and float into us and then anchor us into this, this promise of God's kingdom. This kingdom experience where, where we have all learned to let God be God. We don't try to take God's job from God. We are God's people and God is our God. We have figured out in God's kingdom how to exist in a way that, that lets everyone flourish, lets everyone experience the fullness of life. Where, where it's not like some people have and others have not, we all have enough in God's abundance. We've learned to not learn war anymore. We've learned ways of God's peace. We've learned to solve our problems, not passively, but also not with violence. We've learned in God's kingdom to be God's people. We've learned to solve our troubles in different sorts of ways, ways that proclaim God's goodness, God's enoughness, and one another's belovedness. In Christ, in God's kingdom, Christ is king. And all those ways that, that God has emboldened Jesus, endowed him with the Holy Spirit, just as it talks about here. Now, this passage is not talking about Jesus per se, but in Jesus we see the leader that Isaiah talks about, one who is full of wisdom and understanding, one who faces the realities of this world and looks upon them, judges them judiciously, faces them, solves them, brings them to places of peace and justice. A leader who, who rules with counsel and might, one who is diplomatic, one who is strategic, one who can find and navigate a way through the troubles of this world. A leader who is uh, full of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, one who is grounded in a deep, abiding relationship with God that um, found, is foundational to all else. Now, I know that when we look around in our world, when we see how so few of our leaders in our world look like that, when we see how little of our world is about abundance and sharing and peace, it can feel so dark and so despairing it is easy to throw up our hands and go, why? Why bother? Why do I hold on to this promise? But I trust that, like me, we can look around, and even if we can't look to the highest places in our world, we can look and see glimpses of this kind of leadership, leaders with wisdom and understanding and counsel and, and might and the fear of the knowledge of the Lord right here around us. We can look to one another and see glimpses of it. We can look inside ourselves and see glimpses of it. I know that when we look around in this world and we see so much darkness, it is easy to forget or to put away the hope or to feel like it just can't penetrate. Yet we have one another to keep reminding us to keep helping us to catch glimpses of the ways that God's kingdom already exists among us, to keep us persevering in helping to build God's kingdom little bit by little bit, and sometimes in big bits, because we can do it together with God's help, remembering that God's abundant grace is constantly with us. Friends, we need one another to abide in hope. I don't know anyone who can, who can exist in God's hopefulness without others helping, without, mama being, uh, or without us being little moles and having mama come and, and point out, remind us, opening us up to our imagination that Isaiah teaches us as well. We need one another to foster hope, to anchor us in hope, to anchor us in the hope of God's kingdom, to help us to see and imagine and let God's kingdom break through in these darkest places. 
part of the ways that God envisions uh, this church being hope in the world is to be a place of healing and wholeness. There are ways that that is already true, but God is inviting us to be even more of an anchor of hope for people in this community. When we gather together to make sure all people have a space and a voice and a, and a ear for them here in this place, when we are able to help each other eradicate racism in our community around us, eradicate injustice of all the shapes and forms that it takes, we are echoing God's kingdom, and we are helping to foster hope, not just within ourselves, but in all the ways, in all the people around us. Friends, we need each other to remind us, to illuminate these promises, these visions of God's kingdom. Where are you anchoring your hope these days? Where are you helping to anchor one another's hope these days. Friends, it's more than, um, than just positive thinking, but there are ways that we can catch each other, catch ourselves, focusing on hope more than on despair. In our Advent booklets that we sent out, and we have some at the back too if you need one, there are, um, there's a, <clears throat> a page on hope, some exercises on hope helping us to think about the ways that we find ourselves despairing in our thoughts and transforming those thoughts into hopeful thoughts. In those ways when we're watching the news or going about our lives or tripping around a bad day, when we are convincing ourselves that things won't ever change or that things just are the way they are or that nothing can get better, grounding ourselves, finding that anchor of hope and helping us to transform those ideas, catching each other, helping each other transform those ideas can illuminate the hope, can bring it out, can let it shine in the darkness that can so quickly overcome us. Friends, where is our anchor of hope today? As we come forward for communion in just a few minutes, I pray that you will let the vision of God's kingdom dance in your heads and in your hearts, in your souls, in your very being. As we gather around a table where Christ is the fulfillment of all of this, this, long, this long legacy of God's kingdom, this fulfillment, this transformation where all are able to be in peace with one another, may we come to this table full of that hope, full of the ways that we represent for each other. It is within us that Christ dwells. May we come to the table with this vision in us, flowing through us. May we be hope for one another. May we root ourselves very deeply in the hope of God's kingdom. May we await with abundant hope the coming of Christ. May it be so. Amen.